What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to State of Play with Brandon Bales. I'm here today with Tommy Refinis uh, of Team Meet. Uh, very exciting, happy to have him here. Uh, if you don't already know, Team Meet created Super Meat Boy that came out two years ago on uh, Xbox Live Arcade and has since been ported to the PC. And it's available for Mac as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's available. I don't know if I would suggest people buying it. There you go. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, it's a game that just sold over a million copies, and uh, their story was also, also recently featured in Indie Game the Movie, a fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, but without further ado, welcome to the show, Tommy Refinis. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start with what's been, when, you know, what, what's current and what's been going on, and I, I feel like, uh, you know, recently people have probably seen uh, the movie uh, yeah. that you've been in, and... Um, like let's just start, you know, simply with that. Like uh, that, I'm sure, I'm sure has had like a huge effect on on uh, your day to day activities. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> since it yeah. came out. Um, you want to talk it's, a little bit about that? Yeah, like, it's um, being in a movie is weird because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, people know you now. Right. And then, uh, like, I went on Netflix and just saw how many ratings it had, and it had like seventy four thousand ratings. So. <laughs> That means, like, at least 74,000 people know my face and my name and my story. Uh, I imagine it's a lot more because I know, like, every Netflix person doesn't rate the movies. So that's a lot of people, and um, it's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's uh, daily life is... It's, it's basically the same, but we get, like, 15 emails or so a day, depending on the day. Uh, of people wanting, like, do you have any tips for me? Do you have any, uh, how do I get started in this? How um, Do you guys take interns? Can I come visit your office? And it's like, I love that it's touched so many people, but leave me alone. <laughs> because, like, I, I get, like, I have a FormSpring account also, and I made it so I could be just a little bit more accessible because uh, there's like this misconception I'm this really angry man, and that's not 100% false. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I wanted to be a little bit more accessible, and it's kind of a double-edged sword because on the one hand, people can ask me questions. On the other, they ask me the same fucking question mm -hmm. all the time. So, yeah, we get, we get uh, where do I start? How do I, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I can't give that kind of advice to people because... I wouldn't advise anybody to learn the way I did <laughs> because the way I learn is um, not the most healthy way, which is kind of lock yourself in a room and read pages and pages of SDK documentation Whew. for days. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how I learn. That's not how most people learn, I don't think. And people ask, like, what books did you read? What college courses did you take? And and it's it's intriguing to have people like look up to you and stuff but i also kind of feel like i let people down as a role model because i can't i don't know what to say to you mm -hmm. <laughs> all i can say is the, the the most common one is what language do i start with and i go whatever one you can program in right now i don't i don't know and if you can't the easiest one for you <laughs> mm -hmm. i can't tell you because i started with like q basic and then c plus plus and I don't even think you can like do stuff in QBasic anymore. It's like Visual Basic or something. Right. So it's um, yeah, it's weird to have that kind of celebrity in that way. It it makes me kind of want to recluse just a little bit more. So uh, because I, I don't want I don't want people to judge me based on like how I appear in the movie or how I help other people making games or stuff like that. I kind of want to be. I want to be known for different stuff other than the movie. So mm -hmm. it's weird. I, I mean, I don't mind it, and it was a crazy honor to be in the movie. And, like, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird to, like... It's, some days it affects me more than others. So some days I'll be like, I'm so fucking sick and tired of hearing about this fucking movie all the time. <laughs> and then, like, I, uh, I'm weird with my sleep schedule, so I'll go to bed, and I'll, like, watch Netflix or something. And then... It would always come up in most popular on Netflix, and I'm just like, <laughs> I can never fucking escape this goddamn movie. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's weird. It was an honor, but 
Let's let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's let's get away from from being in films. <laughs> yeah. I, I would you. be an actor though. Yeah, that would, would you? be fun. It would be neat to be like uh to play characters. Yeah. And like uh yeah, do stuff like that. That would be fun. <laughs> if somebody wanted me to be in a movie where I play like a fictitious character of myself, I would do that in a second because <laughs> I would just make fun of everything that I said in that movie all yes. the time over and over. Yes. you That's your cue, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Or make a life story about me, right. but a character of me. <laughs> <laughs> As told through Reddit. <laughs> it would be the greatest movie ever. I would watch it. I, I, I would I would it. watch it and then immediately agri- regret the re- decision to <laughs> sign off on said movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that has its own uh, mm, uh, pits and valleys, as I'll tell you. Uh, I've been involved in that stuff as well. Yeah. So let's uh, so let's also talk about what's also current is um, is eugenics. Uh, it's currently November. But you guys have been teasing this for a couple weeks, and yeah. um, I'm not sure when this is going to air. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, but that's really exciting. And well, first off, I mean, it's exciting that you guys, you and Ed, are working together again. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, yeah. Um, you want to? What can you? What can you tell us about the game at this so, point? So the game actually came up as uh, we were looking for something to do. I've been working on um, improving the engine from Meat Boy, like. There was there was a lot of stuff that I learned during my Mac and PC launches that I definitely want to fix. And then there was like some technical improvements that I wanted to do. Like I want all the graphics to be vectorized or whatever, but that takes a while. Mm. And um, I was still making the editor for uh, Super Meat Boy the game, the iOS game. Mm. And Ed and I <clears throat> wanted to make something. So uh, there was a Ludum Dare. Uh, like one of their little 48 hour game jams and uh, we said well we'll do that and when they were voting on the like the themes or whatever uh, there was a theme for it was called like Thousand Kittens or something like that (laughs) and uh, when it came out and the theme was actually Evolution we're like yeah let's just do the kittens anyway and we'll tie it into Evolution in some way so we started we started working on the game that weekend and by the end of the weekend we had like just like this cat simulator where these cats would breed and they would fight each other and and we're like this kind of has a whole bunch of potential and we decided at that point to because I I was prototyping it in flash and because it was the easiest thing to do and uh, new engine runs off of all flash based like vectors and stuff so I'm like well why don't we make this into like a full game and it gives me an opportunity to take this little game that we've spent like no time on and we're not going to spend all that much time on it but it allows me to uh, like complete all of my vector rendering uh, all of the tech stuff that I wanted to do on a smaller scale than something large and giant as Meat Boy and it's also like a crazy awesome weird game that's sort of snowballing in the same way that Meat Boy snowballed where Meat Boy started out as a hundred level game with no bosses and then turned into like a 320 level game with like eight bosses <laughs> so Eugenics has done kind of the same thing so now there's missions and now there's people that you take missions from and they ask you for weird shit and <laughs> uh, there's this weird underlying theme to the entire game and it's kind of like well this has definitely turned into like the next team meet game it's not just some little experiment anymore it's like this is this has the potential to be like this awesome game wow and yeah we've just been been working on it and uh, currently I'm making neurotic cat AI which is difficult and very boring because yeah you like type in something you're like act timid around this other cat and then you have to wait for that stupid cat to go over this other cat and be like (laughs) and then if he doesn't do it right then you're like god damn it I just wasted like three minutes waiting for this stupid cat to get hungry enough to try to go to food and then have to walk in front of this other cat that it's afraid of so it's really like tedious and boring but uh, it's almost done. <laughs> that, that part of it anyway. That's amazing. I love this idea that you, you're you a slave to your own code. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it really is. Like, I, I stay up, and I'm working on it, and I'm just like, I try to find some joy in that part of the code, and I'm just like, oh, I just want to write engine code. 
toad. <laughs> I hate these dumb cats. <laughs> and then in the meantime, like, my cat is, like, jumping up in front of the screen. And I'm, like, I'm mad at him. But I'm also, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, what is making you act this way? And then he just looks at me and then runs away for no reason. I'm like, what is going on? How can I tap into that? <laughs> I must know. <laughs> I'm just picturing you <laughs> in a couple weeks, you know, hooking your actual cat up to some <laughs> electrodes and <laughs> there's this prodding. there's this weird thing like during the the weekend when we started it um i was making like the first cat ai and it was it was really basic it was like find food take a shit find find somebody to mate with uh jump up on the counter you know st weird stuff like that and i was so into it for the first like two or three days that I had this like disconnect from reality in a way where I went to the store and I'm like shopping for stuff and I'm like looking around and I'm like, everything all of you do is pointless. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, this is all just random stuff because like I'm, I'm looking and this, this old man like picks up an avocado and he's like, hmm, I'm like, just, that's dumb. Just, <laughs> what are you doing? And like, and then I kind of like pause for a second and I'm like, <laughs> I know why I'm feeling like this and I like, call my mom and I'm like I uh, just need some human to talk to <laughs> so I can get back on the same page so I don't view everybody as these pointless random nodes in some world that I could care less about <laughs> so yeah <laughs> do you feel like do you feel like those ideas like I mean, I, I, I can imagine that we all it, slip into this at some point, but do you feel like be, because you spend so much time with code and trying to figure out, you know, the mathematics and the, and the, and the point of all of it, that it's, it seeps into your personal relationships too? Like, say if you're on a date or you're like going out for a beer or whatever, like, did these sorts of things that like creep into Well, you? luckily, like, as far as like the dating stuff... <laughs> I, I have, I have uh, my girlfriend Shannon, I've been with her for uh, well, just over a year now. Congratulations. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> she's awesome. I love her to death. And she's like the best thing that's ever happened to me. But uh, she understands my weird psychosis stuff. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it does, it does seep in because I have, these, I have these weird times where I'm just like, all this is random and stupid. <laughs> And it's and then I'll have these other times where like all I can think about is uh, it actually happened when I was like trying to figure out like a good way to like tessellate stuff on the fly and everything and she was actually so she actually lives up in Seattle now but she was still with me and like it was all I was thinking about <laughs> and like I would look at her face and I'd be like okay if I <laughs> I, I could fill in like all of this stuff. I could totally test like her face and it'd be just fine. But she gets it and she and she loves me because of it and in spite of it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean it, that kind of stuff does seep in and like it, it kind of seeps into everything. Like even like looking at the shadows of these, I'm like, wow, yeah. I could I could totally like recreate that shading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's just kinda how that's kinda how I work is yeah, I, for, forever actually. It's mm. always been like, how how does this work on what sort of deeper, crazier level mm -hmm. than than what is currently presented to me? And yeah, one one day I'll have the opportunity to like make new stuff, and like, actually explore more of like, I I have I have an interest in like everything. Mm. Um, well. No, not everything. <laughs> not, not really people. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have an interest in people on like a purely observational level. Like I want to know, I've always been like interested in like AI and stuff like that. I wanted, I wanted to make robots when I was going to college before I dropped out. But like I've always had this interest in like how does a machine, how would a machine like look at that plug and know that it's a plug? Mm -hmm. Like how would it go through like this database of similar shaped objects and would it like break it down based on environment and where it's been and where where it has been and where it is now and all that stuff and I like exploring things like that and uh, yeah I'm kind of rambling right now. No, but, it's good. <laughs> but that's that's kind of how I work. Is like I I always think of the the how and how how I can also like make it and 
understand it better. It's actually kind of one of the reasons why I don't, uh, I don't use like third party libraries or anything mm. because when I'm building stuff, the joy, like the most joy that I get out of like developing a game or something is the, the underlying parts of the game. Like not so much that the cats jump up on a table, it's the fact that the cats are rendered in this way and mm. they are, they're ordered in this way and they, their, their world is, is, uh, is shaded in this way. Like that's the thing that actually gives me the joy Mm. And that's that's kind of the stuff that I strive for, which is actually the reason why I liked all of my programming jobs, even though some of them, some people may think are boring, like <laughs> server, <laughs> server database programmer and stuff. But even when I was doing that job, I was like, oh, okay, SQL database is pretty quick. And I'm like, how could I make a quicker one? <laughs> and like I would draw these things on paper. I'm like, well, what if everything was like circular reference to everything else? And yeah, I never actually got to make it because, you know, life gets in the way, but that's that's kind of how I approach everything is like I like to know how stuff works and I like to have full understanding of stuff. And when I have the time to actually complete something like to like totally complete something, then I'm like very very happy with it, which is and why I'm not happy with the Mac or the PC version of the mm. game because I had no time. Mm. And like yeah, it's it's just not it's not representative of what I am. I like stuff to be all nice and neat and perfect. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, when you're in like crunch mode and stuff, you actually can't make stuff nice, nice and neat and perfect. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's kind of the goal for this game. Is like I want this one to come out and I want it to be perfect. I want it to run on everything. And I've had time now, and I will have time because there's no. There was no limitation. Like uh, when Meat Boy was coming out, I had negative 800 bucks or something like that. And that was tough. And it's like, okay, well, you need to get paid in December. Otherwise, I lose my apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like, hurry up, hurry up. But don't have that now. So it's, it's a little more comfortable. That's great. Yeah. You're talking about the, uh, the, the crunching to get it in for Game Feast? Yeah, there was that. And then... The, the really messed up thing, and the thing they don't actually show in the movie, is uh, uh, the brunt of all of the work at the end is mine. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the constant, like, there, I, there was a time, like, I, I'm broken still. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I'm not broken to the point of not being functional. Sure. Um, during the crunch time with the game, uh, it, was, it was literally wake up, work for... 20 hours, sleep for four, then wake up and see the bug list back from Microsoft, and there's 128 bugs as opposed to yesterday when there was 120 because of the 120 things I fixed that okay. broke Something 128 else. or it allowed them to get further, <laughs> which meant they found more bugs because we were in development during our submission process. Like, normally the way it goes is you get through this milestone, you get through this milestone, now you fix all your bugs. We were, you get through this milestone, now we have to add the last four bosses in the last five worlds, and we have to fix all the bugs as we were going. And that was my life for a good month and a half of solid time. Like, I, I would sleep on the ground, and <laughs> uh, my parents would come over, they'd bring me dinner, oh. and in the process of them, like, heating up the dinner, I would fall asleep on the ground. Oh. And, like... But that's, that's something that isn't really shown in the movie, and it's something I don't think a lot of people really understand, because right after the game came out, which is basically where the movie ends, mm -hmm. I had a month to do the PC stuff. Mm -hmm. And coming off of that, and then starting over again, because at that, at when we were developing for Xbox, I didn't have time to physically be like, okay, will this work on PC? Uh, yeah, kind of will, kind of won't, but there got to a point where none of my code ran on PC and it all ran on Xbox because that was the only code base I could actually maintain. Mm. So, yeah, like that, that month after, there was no, like Ed had to make like a couple characters here and there and then it was like, okay, now I have to port this whole thing. And then when it came out, of course, it was ridiculously buggy and then I spent like two it was like th maybe it's like three or four days 
I know I didn't sleep for like 48 hours at one point, oh like fixing God. bugs. I did 16 submissions of the Steam build within the first two days of it being launched. <laughs> and that's insane. <laughs> and like, I'm just trying and I'm trying and I'm trying. And yeah, it's, it, it, it really like hindsight, there was nothing I could do. Like it had to be done. But yeah, hindsight. I don't want to go through that. <laughs> that was that was hell. And then Mac was even worse because we actually hired someone to do the Mac, Ooh. and they totally dropped the ball. And three days before it was due, they showed me their build, and it was all weird rendering and no sound. And I'm like, this has to be done in three days. In three days, and I got really pissed off. And I'm like, all right, let's have a race. If I beat you, I don't pay you. <laughs> and I beat them. Uh, but at the cost of, there, there's a significant cost to that where I cannot open up Meat Boy code without having a severe anxiety attack. Jeez. Because it's like, I, uh, I, all I remember of those days was, number one, it was Skyrim weekend. So <laughs> Shannon, Shannon and I were supposed to have a wonderful Skyrim weekend together, and we didn't. And I just remember uh, trying to get it to work on the Mac, finally getting it to work. There was an error with it. And I went out and bought another Mac because Xcode is Xcode 4 is awful. <laughs> so I needed to use Xcode 3 because like reconfiguring the environment and everything was mm. just too much to do in three days. And uh, I remember doing that and I remember being so mad that I had to like suppress all of my anger to not just put my fist through the screen when it would like break or crash or something. And I remember one time I got so mad I like pounded my fists on my desk and my Mac almost flew off and then I saw these like bright lights like it, it had to be like blood pressure or something and yeah to, at that point it was just like I get it done and then I'm not touching it again like the Mac version is horrible and anybody who bought it I'm really 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 sorry and if I could fix it I totally would but <laughs> at the for the sake of my mental health I can't fix it and like it's even to the point where I can't even zip the code and give it to somebody for them to fix <laughs> so it's like it's just like a big apology to everybody about it and it's like if I could fix it I totally would because wow. as frustrating it is as it is for the people that bought it it's more frustrating for me to know that it's out there and it's bad like I <laughs> I wish I could fix it but that ship has sailed oh, man. <laughs> but yeah next time if like from eugenics it's none of the versions will come out until all of the versions are done and that's the main thing that we learned is because Doing, doing a lot of work and then releasing something and doing a lot of work after that is about impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, learn from your mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at that time, um, was it the same? I mean, because you guys knew you were launching on Xbox and you obviously wanted these other versions to come out so you could maximize exposure and profits and yeah. everything. Why, why set the deadline so close? Was it just because, well, it'll be easy to do, or we'll, we, we'll still need that money, or you just didn't know? Like Honestly, I don't remember why we set it so close. I think it, oh, there is a reason. Hmm. Um, we fought, like, tooth and nail with Microsoft to not have a year's worth of exclusivity. Hmm. And um, we honestly thought that it would just take a month. Um, we had already announced that it would be out on Steam, like, like it was October 20th is when it came out on Xbox. We had already announced that I believe November 28th is when it was going to come out on Steam. Mm. And at that time, we had like a whole bunch of press, and mm. there it was. It was like pressure that we unknowingly put on ourselves, and then it was pressure that unknowingly <laughs> fell back on me. Oh man! <laughs> so yeah, like hindsight. Yeah, that's the whole thing, is there's, there's so many circumstances that actually went into all of those decisions that it's like hindsight can't really fix any of them. And like looking back on it, there is literally nothing more we could do. We could have, we could have like pushed back the PC release, um, but at the same time, it was like it, when we were faced with, okay, let's push back the PC release or 
let's just get it done. It's like you want to take the Band-Aid and you want to rip it off. off. Right. You know, you want to struggle through because if you don't, it's just going to be that much harder. And it was actually something that we found out with the editor is uh, we, we promised an editor and we were like, well, we'll launch with the PC version. Well, that month we're like, we can't do this. And then once it was out on Steam and once like all those bug fixes came and like everything had basically settled, there was still some problems. It was like, now I have to do the editor. Mm -hmm. And that editor, which was not a it was not a big thing because it's literally the editor that Ed was using with an interface. Mm -hmm. That process took like eight months because it's just like you want to move on with your life at, at some point. Right. And with the success of the game and like we were we were feeling really good come December because that's when we got our first Microsoft and our first like Steam checks. And we're mm -hmm. like, okay, all right, we can finally right. breathe. And like for me personally... I hadn't touched a girl in like seven fucking years, all right? I wanted to like start to live. I was 20, 29 at that time. Uh -huh. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> because I had lived all of this time in like my apartment. I had, I was driving a 1989 like Ford Econoline rape van. Like it had no windows on it. So this is my dad's work van. And like, I drive around in that thing, and there's, to make it even better, the, the rape van had, like, particle board in the back, <laughs> and then, like, for some reason, we had had some hay in there, and then <laughs> broken fluorescent lights. What? So, so it really was, like, a total rape van, and, like, I'm driving this thing around, and, and like, you know, I, I see these girls in the star, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> funny thing, um, a year, a year before, uh, it was like IGF around that time in 2010. It was like February 2010, like several months before the game came out. That's actually when I met Shannon. Oh. I met her at a Nintendo event. And like uh, I sat through Metroid Other M. <laughs> Kaboom. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, the, <laughs> the only reason I did is because I thought she was cute. Uh, and I tried very, very hard to uh, make her go off point. <laughs> she wouldn't. She was amazing. <laughs> and, um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I really liked her, uh, but at the same time, I was, like, pale and thin <laughs> and broke as fuck, and I lived all the way across the country, and I'm just like, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, we get, our, we get our money, like, it's finally, like, we feel like, oh, we can finally breathe. <laughs> I can, like, I go out, and I, like, I bought a Honda, and I'm like, all right, yeah, I finally have a fucking car that's not, that the girls won't think I'm trying to rape them. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's, that's when, like, my life started mm. after so long and, like, not having any kind of life. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, but, but going back to, like, the editor, it's like, now I have all these things and, like, my brain's, like, going about all the things I want to change and all the things I want to make now. Like, Ed and I had talked about what was going to be game two mm. all during Meat Boy and we're like, oh, we could totally do this, like... Yeah, like, after we're done with this, we can take as much time as we want. And those thoughts are, like, there. And you get this you get this spark of, like, once you release something and, like, it's doing well. And, like, you, you feel, like, like that, that part between, like, October and the end of the year was, like, amazing. Because it was, like, the game launched. Uh, like, it did well with sales. Then we had, like the Steam, like, pre-release sale, and it was, like, number one on, like, the top grossing games on Steam yes. for, like, three or four days. And we are just, like, clicking refresh on the thing. It's like, oh, my Is God. This <laughs> and then, like, then PETA makes fun of us, and that was something we talked about for forever. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my God, all of our dreams are coming. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and then, then, like, that gives you, like, this spark and this drive to be like, we can do this again. Mm. We, can, we can make something awesome again. And... But for me, I'm like, let me promise the editor. Yeah. All right, shit. And then it would be like, okay, that's all I'm doing on the editor today. Right. <laughs> and then during that time, I was going out with this bitch. She was my rebound. He doesn't mean that. <laughs> no, I mean it. <laughs> he means it. No, this wasn't Shannon. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was my rebound girl. And she made my life miserable. In, uh... I made her life miserable. <laughs> kind of worked out. <laughs> but, but, like, 
it was like total rebound and like there was all kinds of weird new drama with that because when you have like when you have like a rebound relationship you tend to work harder even though it's not worth it like you, you tend to like want to compromise and mm. this. you're like oh well yeah maybe I will go to church with you and it's like <laughs> I'm like the most crazy atheist ever. I don't believe in God at all. Why the fuck am I saying I'm going to go to this church? So, yeah, like life is going on and I have this other obligation and that just drags out. And then fucking Valve, who I love and also hate mm. because they release Steam on Mac and then it's like, oh, I have to do a Mac version. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, that was the only... We weren't going to do a Mac version until like Saw and Gamma Sutra or something it was like... Steam for the Mac, and I like type up to Ed, and I'm like, here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, not every uh, game on Steam has that Mac version. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just like, actually, originally, um, I don't think there was going to be a PC version of Meat Boy. Mm. It was just going to be, it was actually just going to be Wii and, um, Wii and Xbox. Mm -hmm. And then as we got closer, like, Steam was, like, doing well, but then it started, like, doing really well, and we're like, well, we already kind of have a PC version, so mm. this seems silly not to. Right, just kind of, just yeah. dust oh. it up a little bit. Oh, yeah, well, we'll just, <laughs> just port it. Yeah. <laughs> you said the P word. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, it's like the, the Wii fanboys. The, my favorite comment was, right. just compress it. Because that was our whole thing. Is like the game. I compressed the fucking shit out of that game. It's a hundred megs compressed to all shit. Or we could just compress it more. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, sure. Uh, uh, forty instead of one hundred and eight. Yeah, forty, and then it's like uh, that makes it into the file for you. <laughs> so yeah, how far did you get in the Wii version before before it just was a uh, so obvious not no go. So the Wii version was actually still going to happen uh, up until we launched on uh, Xbox. We prioritized Xbox because of the obvious importance of Xbox versus WiiWare at the time, because WiiWare at the time was uh, nothing. Like, I can't say sales, <laughs> but it, it was not wise. It was still something we were going to do because it was for the fans and we had already announced it. And, and we love Nintendo and we love our Nintendo guy. And I feel bad every time I talk to him because I'm like, we'll just see how the eShop goes. And, uh, <laughs> then we'll decide if it's worth the risk. Um, but yeah, that was actually planned up until, uh, up until October. October, like the end of October. And... Uh, Oh, uh, two years ago. Yeah, when, okay. when Boy came out. Not, right. not just now. No, no fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was planned, and um, like we, we kicked around all sorts of things. We're like, well, we could just have like less music tracks. And these were, these were talks we were having after we had already submitted it to Xbox for like final everything, like the gold master of it or whatever. Mm. And we're like, well, we could we could cut out some music tracks or something. And I did the math, and cutting out the music tracks even meant it was still like 68 meg. And I'm like, I have compressed this to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, then it got to the point where it was like, well, we'll have to cut out content. And then it was, we can't cut out content, and we can't charge the same. It'll have to be episodic. And then reading through like the guidelines for making episodic content, it was like, this is an engineering nightmare. Yeah. And I'm like is this worth it? And we both were. Ed and I both were like, this isn't, this isn't worth it. And, you know, we felt really, really bad about it. But, yeah, there was there was literally nothing we could do. So, yeah, I mean, I would have loved for it to be on there. That's where it was first. And I, as, as far as how far it went, uh, there is, or there, yeah, there is a playable version of it on the Wii. You just can't play it because it's like, it, basically there's dev kit. Mm -hmm. the, the Wii dev kit, and you, you know, you don't, you're not limited by the size of like the 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 WAD file. It's called. Mm -hmm. You're not limited by that, and you can run it through different means. And that's actually why we started looking for um, a retail publisher to do a disc version, because we wouldn't have had that same issue. And that's that's where we like focused, and we're like, well, we can put it out on like we can get some publisher to do it. And we talked to several several publishers. Each one said, don't do it. Because it was like the Wii sales are, were slowing down even in 2010. And now they're, 
you know, we software is basically non-existent. I mean, it just, like, every publisher just basically told us it's not worth the time, and we can't print our own discs, <laughs> and we're not going to. So, yeah, that was, that was hard, and that was um, something we didn't want to do to all the Nintendo fans because and it's something we didn't want to do personally because it's just like hey, we've disappointed a bunch of people and we've disappointed our Nintendo contact hmm. even our Nintendo contacts understood though because the the size limit and the, right. and the retail thing was just like they understood they're like you know what we get it yeah. so. what if the guy hits you up at the very end of this year or beginning of next year hey you know Wii U is doing really well do you guys consider doing it now like what would you do no yeah. <laughs> the book is closed uh, yeah. on, on, we actually had uh, I had an email the other day from Microsoft about Windows 8 <laughs> and I laid it out for them because they're like hey we want to talk you know to, to get it in the Windows 8 store has to be certified blah 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 and I'm like that's cool in the uh just for full disclosure, if I have to do anything, <laughs> anything at all except send you the compiled Steam executable, this will not happen. I said I can't take out Steamworks. I can't. I can't integrate anything. If there's any changes to any of the code, I can't do it. I can't send it to anybody. It's like that's how closed the book is. Like it's. I can't. The book is closed and it's burnt it's and it's buried and then some dude ate half the ashes. <laughs> it's weird. So he can't do it. We'll find him. We'll find that guy and we'll pump his stomach. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Pump his stomach, put the ashes back together, and then maybe we'll talk, but still not going to happen. <laughs> I think anyone would respect after knowing uh, how it's affected you. I think anyone would respect. I mean, that's not to say like it's like... Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean... <laughs> The price paid versus the reward is still very worth it. Um, the independence that comes from putting out a game that sells well over a million copies is worth the pain and stress and all that stuff. Doesn't mean you take steps to avoid it in the future, right. but yeah, I, I would feel really bad about complaining <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I'm like, fine. <laughs> I'm like, totally, totally fine. So. Yeah. That's great. Um, well, remind me. Uh, I know I'm. Well, remind us how, or you. Well, tell us your own version of how uh, you and Edmund came to work together. So, um, a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a site, Newgrounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Newgrounds uh, has been around for forever in internet terms. Since, <laughs> since the dawn of the internet, there's been Tom Fulp and Newgrounds. And uh, in college, I was, uh, I was angsty, as, as people are in college. And uh, I made these like little Flash movies and these Flash games. And, and all my stuff, looking back on it, was angry and political. Mm. I don't know why, because I hate politics. <laughs> I hate the people in politics. I hate it all. Uh, I was so stressed out about Rodney. <laughs> Oh man, I was I was not so much that he would have been like bad. Uh -huh. um, I don't think he would have been good, but you know it's one of those things like I don't matter who the president is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was more that uh, mean, hateful people would have been justified if he would have been elected. So it was like, uh, yeah, the 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 David Siegel or whatever the guy that was going to fire all of his employees if Obama got a. Uh, elected. I hear about this. Oh, it was the it's some guy down in Florida that owns a bunch of timeshares. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, he's worth like I don't know how many billions of dollars or whatever. Wait, not the guy from um, uh, Queen of Versailles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I saw that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. haven't seen it, but I kind of want to now, considering how big of a dickhead that guy is. He's, so yeah. So uh, yeah, but had Romney won, that man would have been justified. And then the next election, it would have been worse, mm -hmm. and there would have been even more like threats and everything. But anyway. Tangent. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I made all these like flash movies and stuff, and it was all angsty and weird. And uh, I would submit them to Newgrounds before there was like an official portal or anything. And Tom liked them, and I eventually got hosting through Tom, and like that's where my site Tomunism.com was. And uh, Ed was doing about the same thing. 
where he was making like dead baby dress up and these right. weird crazy movies and we were both part of the Newgrounds network and we knew each other through that um, and skip ahead several years I make server stuff and Ed makes comics and uh, I got into games and well I always wanted to do something with video games because I always liked them <laughs> and uh, I get my I get my industry job and that was garbage of course and uh, I quit and I started making another game with my friend Aubrey, and uh, uh, it got it got into the IGF for like technical excellence or something. And I was looking through past winners, and I see that uh, Gish won the grand prize. And I'm because I was looking through something I do. I'm like, oh, who won that year? Who won that year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like how people recite baseball stats. Sure. <laughs> with IGF. <laughs> but uh, so I see that he wins, and I'm like. Edmund, he used to be linked on my site. He was mm. the dead baby dress up. So I, I am him, and we, we start talking. And we finally met at that IGF where uh, my game Goo was nominated for technical excellence, and we decided to see if we could work together, and we made this Flash game called Gray Matter. And around that time, he was working with um, Alex Austin, and they were trying to get uh, Gish 2, mm. like a development deal for that, basically on Xbox Live. This was like the beginning of Xbox Live, the same year that like Castle Crashers came out, the first summer of Arcade, all that stuff, like right after that. And they needed somebody that could program for a console and had this experience. And my job before that was I was making stuff for Xbox 360. None of it ever came out because the company was bullshit. <laughs> Streamline Studios. Okay. They're out, they're out of business. Okay, we can say uh, that. They're out of business. <laughs> they operate out of Myanmar now. What yeah. in the world? Yeah, I don't know. Myanmar, wait. Malaysia. Why did I say Myanmar? Oh, I, don't know. I think I watched the Seinfeld really. last night where it was... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Myanmar. No, Myanmar. Malaysia. Yeah, they operate out of Malaysia now, and they're all crooked and horrible, and I hate them, and they're dumb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but none of my work actually saw the light of day. Um, but yeah, I had all this experience with Xbox 360. Like, I was working on beta Xbox 360 kits so like I saw through just like almost every iteration of the 360's like hardware cycles to get to final final hardware so like I was very familiar with it and I uh, my job was um, I had to take the Unreal 2X engine and I had to port it to the 360 and then I had to optimize it so like I knew the hardware like really well mm. and uh, so I was brought in to, to basically do that for Gish 2, where Alex would be doing, like, physics and gameplay and stuff. I would just make sure it ran and was basically perfect on the 360, which I was looking really forward to, because that's what I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that fell through, and uh, Ed and I, we, were, we, like, became best friends throughout, like, meeting in 2008, working on Grey Matter, and then, you know, talking about Gish 2, and... At that time, we were thinking about working on Meat Boy together as the WiiWare game, just kind of on the side while we were doing Dish 2. Because Ed had already made Meat Boy at this point. He had made uh, Meat Boy with John McKenty in Flash. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was pretty popular. And Nintendo, like, approached him. They mm -hmm. wanted to work with him. And, uh, yeah, he needed somebody that could program on console. Right. I'm like, well, give me the... Give me the Wii SDK. I'll read it this weekend, and <laughs> and you know that's that, that was basically how the conversation went. And yeah, we when Gish Two kind of fell through, we did the bait and switch with Microsoft, and they you know the rest is sort of history. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of met through we met, and then no contact. Met again, uh, BFF. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so you said before um, in our email contacts, like coming up to this, you uh, you said that you, I mean, you and Ed, and now you say you know you guys are really good friends, and you said you had the same, like you share similar values. Um, tell me about those similar values that you guys feel the team meet um, exemplifies. Um, yeah, we both feel like let's see in a more general way it's basically like you have to do stuff you love yeah otherwise it'll turn out like garbage <laughs> if you try to do stuff for money it'll probably turn out like garbage or you will compromise your original vision and you'll be kind of left empty or whatever you know that's 
I guess there's some people that that kind of works for, where they they want to go in and charge like little microtransactions for buying coins, and to them at the end of the day, when they're scooping in like ten million dollars a month, that's okay for them. But yeah, you know, I not to say I wouldn't enjoy ten million dollars a month. I'm not stupid. <laughs> if I if I could get ten million dollars a month and not feel horrible about it, oh yeah, I'd be all over that. <laughs> but yeah, we 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 share we share. We're we're very similar when it comes to like where we think games are going, uh, how how they got there, the the ways that we think you know uh, different things have happened, like the introduction of tablets and smartphones and all that stuff. We share those kind of similar ideas where you know we always. I, I, I guarantee Ed shares this, but it's much it's different for him because as an artist, his his outlet will not change because like what he draws on, it's always going to be paper. You know, what I create on is like t- two years ago is Xbox. In two years, it'll be Xbox Four, maybe, or it'll be. Uh, some sort of tablet or it'll be this so it, it's always changes but I think we both share the same idea that you either evolve and embrace you know new new technologies new mediums new ways of thinking or you kind of render yourself obsolete and irrelevant mm. so yeah I, I you know we both we both share those kinds of ideas I mean <laughs> going back to the movie he thinks Halo shit too but they only uh they only showed me things. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that Halo is shit. Okay. To, to clarify, and I will finally get a, a... It is my opinion that those games are shit because they basically copy the same formula every single time. There's Call of Duty Black Ops 2. They didn't even bother making up a new name. They're like, <laughs> uh, fuck it, number yeah. two. You know, and... <laughs> That isn't to discount the work that the people put into it. That's not to discount, like, the tech is all amazing behind it. Like, I, I have a very, like, huge appreciation of, like, the Halo 3 tech. I mean, I remember looking at it and, like, looking at it compared to Halo 1 and just being amazed by it. Same with uh, Unreal Engine, you know, all of those. Like, I can look at those and because of how I am, I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I can respect that. It's the <laughs> games themselves and the principles behind the game that I just see them as basically another Madden. Right. Because Madden... Do they still make Madden? Because I haven't heard of, like, Madden 13 yet. Is that is that a thing? It's happening. I know that there was some NBA game that they're not doing oh, yeah, this year. <laughs> yeah, I, that was great. The, the newest like NBA executive producer Jay Z. <laughs> what the fuck does he do on that thing? Like that's why that's why I feel like it's shitty because it's like, okay, well, this is NBA 2K3 through 2K13 or whatever. Executive producer Jay Z. It's just like it's another little tag that they put on there that's gonna attract this range of consumer over to their mm-hmm. their thing. And those games like NBA 2K12 and NBA 2K13, I guarantee are very, very similar with the exception of roster updates. And I get it. I mean, some people love those games, and I'm not discounting anybody that, you know, I, I don't think people are stupid for liking Halo. I don't think people are stupid for liking Madden. It's just to me, I don't like those games, and I think they're bad. I think they're bad because I don't think they innovate in any way. I don't think they push anything forward. I don't like those games the same way I don't like Twilight movies. And, uh, yeah, now I'm never going to get any 13-year-olds to love it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like Twilight movies. I don't like uh, remakes of, uh, like, the older movies. Like, aren't they doing, like, a short circuit or something? Oh, I I heard, that wouldn't I, surprise me. <laughs> when they do Back to the Future, I'm going to kill someone. Yeah, I... That they're they're gonna put it in, in like a Tesla, and like, <laughs> I love Tesla cars, but oh my god, yeah, just, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's move forward. Yeah, let's. Move. Yeah, but it's it's mainly for for that reason. So, yeah, I think they're shitty. Also, I'm really bad at all of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't have the the hand eye coordination to actually like headshot somebody in Halo plus when you play on Xbox there's always people calling you faggots and, yeah. and racial slurs all the time and I just, yeah <laughs> I, 
Yeah. So, like those games if you want. But <laughs> it, is, it is of my opinion that they are they are a more consumable product than, than a game like Shadow of the Colossus or Braid or, you know, uh, Borderlands even. Like, I feel like those offer at least some sort of originality, whereas these are just reskins of previous games. Now, in all fairness, I haven't played Halo 4. I didn't play Halo Reach, but I imagine <laughs> that they're probably pretty similar because I don't... Actually, Halo Reach was like an RTS or something, wasn't it? No, you're thinking Halo Wars. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How silly of me to think, <laughs> to think that uh, they were all the same. <laughs> well, I could go on about it. I definitely could go on about it, but that's not the place. Um, yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not. You're not far off the mark. I've. I've been. Yeah. Yep. It's. Yeah. I mean, they're. They're. They're great. I don't like them. I don't like lots of things. Yeah. And I love all other things. Yeah. So. And it sucks. I don't, it's not fair for anyone. I, I don't, I mean, who do I, oh yeah. It's not fair for anyone to, to, to give anyone else shit about what they like or what they don't like. Yeah, I actually had a tweet the other day um, at me. And I don't get a lot of them, mm -hmm. which is nice because I don't like reading them. <laughs> um, but I got one that the uh, asshole, <laughs> um, <laughs> Halo basically built Microsoft you idiot. I don't care yeah. that it built Microsoft, or my, not Microsoft, Xbox, because sure. obviously. Um, but on a similar note, uh, the guy's tweet before that was calling Chris Hansen uh, somebody that just preys on desperate people. And that's the guy that does the uh, To Catch a Predator. So are the desperate people the, the people that diddle the little kids? Like, is that what he was saying? But yeah, like, yeah, people... People will give, like, that's how I come across in the movie is off that line because I basically told millions of people that their home team is shit. Right. <laughs> and as a result, they all hate me. <laughs> Dang. But yeah, enjoy enjoy your Halos. Yeah. You'll never see me playing Halo on Xbox Live, and I think that's fine. That's You would kill me and fine. teabag me anyway. <laughs> Damn and, right I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, <Yeah>. asshole. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> oh God. Oh man. Well, okay. So going, um, stepping back a tiny bit. Tell me, uh, tell me a little about, and, and as far as embracing new forms, uh, what you all intend to accomplish uh, when you, when you get around to uh, Meat Boy the game. If you're happy talking about that. Yeah. So people, people are playing games more on their phones and their iPads than they are on like a 3DS or anything. I believe I believe the iPad sold what is it 4 million units in a weekend. It took 3DS a year to get to that. And anyone that's and I'll admit I was I was one of the people that thought that well two things. <laughs> I was one of the people who thought the iPad was the dumbest fucking idea in the world. <laughs> Mainly because I couldn't see how it could be used for anything more than a consumer device. Um, the world obviously needed a consumer device, which is why people buy them so much. There's not a lot of productivity software. You can't use, because I remember it was right when netbooks were big, you know. And I had a netbook, and yeah, a netbook was just like, oh, I can take this on the airplane. And, you know, I can I can check emails and I can do this stuff and and if I need to I can code and I can write documents and stuff and when the iPad came out I'm just like this is <laughs> how I'm gonna code this is how. <laughs> and you know quite honestly I didn't understand and I didn't have the foresight to to embrace that this is something people want. People don't want to always be productive. And that's not to say you can't be, like, you can do emails and stuff, but mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's writing a novel on an iPad. I don't think anybody's pro, I know nobody's programming on an iPad. Uh, so, yeah, it was, and kind of looking, looking back and looking at it that way, it was just sort of like I was a naysayer for a while. Just because to me, and to me personally, it didn't apply. There was no need in my life for an iPad. Um, I use one now, totally as a consumer device to watch Netflix before I go to sleep. So, 
in that way, that's what the world needed. And looking at that and seeing that this is, this is a way to reach more people than putting something on 3DS or putting something on Vita. In that way, we need, we need to like evolve and we need, to, we need to embrace this because that is where stuff is heading. Even though I may not necessarily like it, and I like buttons, and I think all this stuff, this is, this is what people want. And this is, this is what people want, this is what people are familiar with, and this is what people are comfortable with. And to try to go against the grain based on, like, not even, like, a principle, it's just a lack of understanding on my part, mm -hmm. is very counterproductive to what... I should be doing with myself and my career and as like a human being in general because that's me that is me basically turning into crotchety old man when I'm 31 <laughs> where it's like oh, iPad oh, fuck off you can't do that <laughs> so with Meat Boy the game what we want to do is we want to we basically want to put because going back to the whole like consumable thing and like the microtransactions and everything games for the most part, there are exceptions, of course. Games, for the most part, on the iPad are very consumer-driven. They're not really meant to give you any sort of experience. They're meant to sell you something. It goes back to a rant I had in 2008 at GDC where I said it was the Tiger handheld of this generation. <laughs> that still applies to an extent. The people that were putting out Mega Man and Sonic and all that stuff on the iPad have learned that that's not what the iPad's for. In the beginning, that's what they thought it was for. It's actually, it's a new device, it's a new way to play. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's fully captivated anybody with any, any particular game right now. There's no like, there's no Shadow of the Colossus moments on an iPad game right now, as far as I can tell. Just from the games I've played, I've never experienced anything because it seems to be very formulaic, you know? Tap, buy your coins, buy your coins. Tap, 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 tap. Mm -hmm. So with Meat Boy the game, we want to, we want to offer that. We want to, we want to give someone that. We want to give somebody the experience that they had with Meat Boy as far as a fully realized game experience. We want a definite end, a definite beginning, definite end, and we want definite progression in it. We don't. It's not going to be a game where. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, well, you could buy this upgrade, yeah. and he gets a jetpack. <laughs> you could play for three hours, or you could pay us a dollar. It's not going <laughs> to be that, because that's a consumer game. What we want is a game experience. Yeah. We, want, we want to put out a game on the iPad that we would enjoy playing. And that's, I mean, that's, that's where Meat Boy came from, is we want to make a game that we enjoy. And we both have iPads. I now have every fucking tablet imaginable. Surface, <laughs> Android, <laughs> all of those. And I use those for certain things, but it would be nice to use those for something that I would want. And the hope is, and it, I know it will happen, because it is going to be the natural progression of, of this medium of games, just like it was with... Nintendo and all that stuff is is as when the game when it first comes out everything's kind of crap and then you know you you get better as you as you cycle through your plateaus yeah yeah you know you people learn and they learn how to make for the platform just the same as like I was looking at screenshots of uh, uh, GTA 4 compared to GTA 5 and like it's night and day mm -hmm. this one looks like garbage now mm -hmm. whereas uh, 4 looks like garbage and 5 looks amazing and it's the same console but it's people have learned to utilize the hardware in the way to fully realize more of their game and in a game like Grand Theft Auto's case that is graphics and that's performance and that's physics and that's all this stuff and people are learning to do that with iPad now I mean there's there's games that are challenging that are fun and that, you know, that there's, there's more consumer crappy games, but more people are seeing it as this, this, more people are seeing it as a legitimate gaming platform instead of a, a cash cow. And that's just going to be good because, you know, the more good games that you have, the better, you know, the better it is. So yeah, Meat Boy, 
we want it just to be we want it to be something good something memorable and something that's just going to be just going to be fun you know and yeah we're going to charge for it we're not going <laughs> to put it out for free but uh it's you know we'll, we'll make money off of it but we're not going to bilk people out of money for it you know it's not going to be by this character <laughs> and you can jump two times farther <laughs> you know uh, that's that's not what we want because actually I feel like that's the bad stuff even though going back to grumpy old man that's what people seem to like because there are games that literally clear like 10 million dollars a month based off of that so it shows that there is a market for it mm -hmm. there are people that enjoy it or tolerate it enough to where they will buy to get to the next level so they don't have to necessarily experience everything but I think that's bad for games and I guess, I guess as a responsible game developer, it's on the shoulders of people that want to change that to try to change it. And not that we're going to change anything with our silly little game with a neat boy. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to change anything, but at least, at least the people that are craving something like that, they will get it. And they'll get it from somebody that is also craving it. So in that way, it'll be honest. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and it's not a port. Right. Everybody thinks it's a port. Um, there's no way that game would... You can't do precision. And me, the, the bitchy control guy, is not going to allow <laughs> something to come out that is going to be like, this doesn't feel right. I, totally. I can't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to live with myself. It's a totally new game. It's an idea that uh, I prototyped during, like, two GDCs ago in the hotel room because, like... Everybody at GDC was like, hey, look at my iPad. Look at my iPad game. Uh -huh. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I, I made a little Meat Boy character that would actually run, and then I made these little levels where, like, he would, you know, he would wall jump and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this could probably work, and it could probably be fun. And then as we explored it more, we're like, okay, this is fun. Cool. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it does. Great. Hopefully, people just won't buy it because it's like, oh, it's meat boy. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind sales like that, obviously, because I hope lots and lots of people buy it and enjoy it. But I rather, I rather people recommend it as there's this awesome game for iPad, not meat boy on iPad. Right. So that's great. Are you guys are how do you have ideas about how you might market it that way so that it does appear to be a brand new experience so it's i mean the game looks totally different oh that's the main thing is like the art is totally different wow. it doesn't look anything like the first meat boy oh. at all um and the other thing we're going to do is we're just really going to talk about it and we're going to basically talk a lot about what the game is not I see. And that's how we're going to contrast it to other games that are out there. Because you do have little platformers out there. Uh, you have like your Jetpack Joyrides and your Punch Quests mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And that's not what we're going for. Those are endless loop games that have no defined... There's no defined experience. And that's not what we want. Yeah, that's, what, that's definitely what I sour on. You know, my girlfriend got into Jetpack Joyride for... Endless, endless hours. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I could play it for a little bit. And I said, but what's? But what happens at the end? Where yeah, yeah. He? Where does he? Does he win? Does he? <laughs> does he get to that place? Does he make his jetpack better? <laughs> and he does if you pay. if you pay, or you play for a very long time, <laughs> like my girlfriend did. Yeah, uh, but well, good on you. Good on you. I appreciate that. We'll try. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um how did, how did it come about that you were probably diabetic? How did that happen? Oh, so um, my mom has been a diabetic ever since I was born. Mm. Um, she's the type 1, totally insulin dependent. Wow. And uh, I always had like these weird episodes where I would, my sugar would go really low, like hy hypoglycemic, mm -hmm. and I'd have to eat something. And that, uh, that was kind of like, uh, we may need to watch this. And then... Uh, one day I was really, really thirsty, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I kept drinking orange juice, and I started feeling really bad. Oh. And we checked my sugar on my mom's glucometer, and it just said high. Those things go up to 600. <laughs> the, uh, the, the safe range is 80 to 120. 
Oh, wow. Uh, when you eat, like, a, if you were to, like, sit down and have a piece of cake, you would probably rock it up to 180, but if your pancreas works, if you're not diabetic, that will go down very quickly because the pancreas compensates for the sugars and all that. Right. So uh, we go into the hospital, and yeah, sure enough, sugar is super high. They give me some insulin, it brings it down. And then for two years, I didn't have to take insulin, which that's called the honeymoon period, but most honeymoon periods are like three months. Yeah. So for a while, I thought, oh, maybe because my thyroid was also messed up. I'm like, maybe my thyroid's just messed up. Yeah. And then, yeah, like two years later, it's like, oh, my sugar's 480. Jeez. Shit, got to take some insulin now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not so bad. Um, could be worse. Yeah. I have a little insulin meter, yeah, a little pump thing um, oh, cool, it's hooked yeah. into me. Wow. This is this is uh, one of the first things I bought after Meat Boy. Oh, cool. Because I had a, uh, I was injecting with these like pen needles. Right. You can actually see them in the movie. Like, yeah, I, remember. I don't actually use the pen needle. I like take a syringe and get it out. And, um, but yeah, this is much easier. Yeah. It's sure. difficult to sleep on though because you will not. I have rolled over on this thing and like hit my nuts so oh. many times. Oh. <laughs> Because you wake up and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> I was just dreaming about spiders. And <laughs> <laughs> um, my dreams about spiders aren't good dreams. Really? Oh, they're nightmares every time. I hate spiders. <laughs> and then, uh, it's a weird story, but uh, I always have these dreams where these giant colorful spiders that are all around. And like I'm kind of like walking through and their webs get on me and then they crawl up my head. And I'm like, oh God, oh God. And then we go to the... Um, Academy of Sciences in San Francisco and they had like this Amazon rainforest exhibit and I turn the corner and sure enough the spiders in my dreams are in these fucking cabinets and they're like huge and multicolored and I'm like let's leave let's <laughs> go but also at the same time I'm, I had to get really close and look at them yeah. because you see them in your dreams and you're like oh. but then you get close to them and you're like are they still as scary yes Yes, they are still as scary. <laughs> uh, do you think you're dreaming about your impending death? Uh, by spiders? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I'll kill myself before that happens. <laughs> Phil Fish will kill himself if his game doesn't finish. I'll kill myself if, like, there's a room full of spiders and I'm going to die. I will just, like, swallow my tongue and kill myself. I will bite my tongue off so I bleed to death. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Um, well, that actually leads into our next question, uh, which, well, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Odd. Uh, uh, Jamie here has a couple of uh, weapons, and we're going to talk. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, uh, I knew this was an ambush. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. We trust <laughs> This um, is a really elaborate ambush. Yeah, very elaborate. Could have just opened the door and just, like, brained me with something, but no, like, a whole hour interview. And then you Um... Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Um, no, I was going to talk about uh, it was it was a bad it was gonna be a bad joke about why you didn't code the Binding of Isaac because you don't like spiders and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like spiders. <laughs> <laughs> I can't add no. Yeah, go away. <laughs> I don't like poop jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better than that. We're yeah. We move past this. This is low brow. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. No. Um. Uh. Yeah. Well. Uh, so talk about. I mean. Because clearly, uh, I mean, you and Ed, uh, you know, like for all, I mean, I, I just, you know, rewatched Indie Game and, and um, I remember when, in our interview with, with him, you know, he, he said, I said, what's next for you? And he goes, I really want to work with Tommy mm. a lot, you know, and, and it, you know, obviously it warms, warms my heart. <laughs> the cockles. The cockles. I, I almost said it, but I didn't want to <laughs> go there and just, you know. Um, um, so yeah, but then he said, so I, and I remember asking him, like, you know, you ended up programming with someone else in this thing, and he said, I, I think he, I mean, I, I should know this because I did the interview, but um, it was something about you, were you working on something else, or like working on the editor or something? I was like, doing the editor. Yeah. Yeah, and um, Ed, Ed's work stopped, like, right after the Xbox the, the, Yeah, the, like, after the Xbox, there was some stuff he had to do for the Steam release, but it was literally, like put in head crab, adjust menus, you know, stuff that was done in, like, a few days. Um, yeah, my work didn't stop, like, for a while, but because of the editor. Right. And, um, yeah, that's basically why I wasn't part of Binding of Isaac, because uh, Ed was stir-crazy for a while because he had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, he had to do something. He was drawing these really weird pictures of people screaming. And uh, so he had to do something. And yeah, so I, I wasn't able to do it. Like, literally wasn't able to do it. Ed always says in his story is, Tommy went on vacation. Yeah. I needed a vacation too. <laughs> Not exactly true. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of issues there. I, went, I did go on a vacation. I went to <laughs> Hawaii with... Uh, the aforementioned girl that... I don't know what you're talking about. No, <laughs> the aforementioned... <laughs> but but uh, I went to Hawaii and well, we just yelled at each other for like the first three days. It was wonderful. <laughs> Magical. Magical place, Maui. Um, but yeah, I came back and then like Ed started Isaac like a couple weeks later. Mm. But yeah, there was, a, there was a lot to do with that. Like Ed was afraid that this girl would kind of take me away from games and I wasn't into the girl all that much <laughs> so I knew it wouldn't happen but it was a fear for him mm-hmm. and um, yeah, so the vacation thing though somewhat accurate isn't like the reason like it the timeline doesn't exactly match sure. up it was literally like I couldn't I was fixing like the editor launched in April and uh, there were bugs, of course, because it was a it was a shoddy job. I'll, I will admit it. It was a really shoddy fucking job. But it was like, I need to be done with this. I've, I've, I can't do this anymore. So it came out, and yeah, there were bugs, and I fixed the bug. I didn't get done fixing bugs until about September of 2011. So, and it's not like it was constant work. It was just daunting work where like I wanted to be working on the engine for the next stuff and I actually started it but it was like you know Godfather 3 every time I think I'm out I'm only back in <laughs> so that was like yeah I would, I would be like all right it's done da, 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 da. and then oh we get bug report, uh, bug report bug report and I'm just like all right and close this project open this project <laughs> very begrudgingly type out the code <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's basically why we couldn't yeah. work on it together. Um, it just, it just, it just couldn't yeah. be done. You know, sucks because. Uh, well, there's there's actually more to that because had we worked on it together, it wouldn't have been Flash. Mm. Probably would have taken longer, and it probably would have ballooned like every idea we have does. <laughs> it would probably be coming out like now, and it would be like this full-fledged, you know... Well, not, not saying buying and buying yeah. isn't, but it's like, it wouldn't be a Flash game. It would probably be more stuff. You know, it, it, the game wouldn't be the same. And this was basically... Binding of Isaac is just... It's just all Ed. Right. So. And yeah, it sucks. And it, it... it Quite honestly, it like, really... It really fucked with me. Yeah. Quite a bit, because it was like... Well... There were several reasons why I fucked with uh, One of them was... Spiders. Yeah, there's spiders. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> Hoop jokes. Um, one of them was uh, because everyone thought it was a Team Meat game. Mm. And Team Meat isn't this big, giant company. It's not Edmund McMillan and Team Meat. Like, it, when, you, when, a, when a press person says Edmund McMillan and Team Meat, it's just... It's, it's like saying, uh, this is... This is Mr. John Harrington and his wife. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The wife has a fucking name. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so in, in that way, it was like, ah, oh, great. You know, I'm I I didn't do this game. Like, I wouldn't put my name to that game because I didn't do it. And then the second thing that was really really bad about it is there were performance issues because it was in Flash. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons it actually runs as well as well as it does, is because of me. Because I was telling Florian how to optimize yeah. his code. But the downside to that is I was getting blamed for the poor frame rate. Oh, oh these are the same guys that made the Meat Boy port on, on the PC. And no wonder it runs like shit. And I'm just like, come on, people. The praise <laughs> all went to Edmund. <laughs> and the negativity the te- of the, the game went issues. to me. Oh. I had nothing to do with it. So... Honestly, it really, it, it made me feel very, very discounted. Like, mm-hmm. I am just this interchangeable piece in these Edmund McMillan right. games. And uh, it still feels like that to an extent. Mm-hmm. I mean, because in a way, it is true. Because he was able to make a game all by himself without me. And during all that time, 
Like when Isaac was coming out, I was doing the Mac version. Mm. You know, I was doing editor stuff, and it's just like I'm trapped in this cage, and he's free. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, it's good to good to be working together again because it's just like. You know, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel productive because when I don't feel productive, then I like, I start reaching for other things to do, and like, I want to do, like I've, like I said, I have interests in all sorts of things. So I like started building all of these other things, and I have this notebook of all these weird things that some of them have to do with games, some of them have to do with, I don't know, social networks and uh, weird testing software and all this stuff that I like want to write and. Eventually I will, but it's it's good to be like creatively working on something that, that feels like old times because uh, one of the things I really miss is, and one of the things I'm looking forward to with like eugenics and Super Meat Boy the Game is doing the interviews where talk about the games because that's where Ed and I had the most fun. I, I like having that kind of fun because talking about Myself is uh, it's not that much. <laughs> I like my games more than I like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Wow. But I like me a whole lot, so don't oh, get good. Oh good. <laughs> yeah. Good. It's just I like the games more. It's like uh, <laughs> I love chocolate cake, but chocolate cake with sprinkles. Oh my Come god. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Um, cool. Well, you guys, you know, are doing a great job. So um, we try. Yeah. Uh, here's a question for you. Um, that I wanted to ask earlier. Um, why do you hate me? AKA, why do you make a game for robots? AKA, why Super Meat Boy is so hard? <laughs> <laughs> because it deserves, oh. it deserves to be hard because you, you <laughs> are spoon fed all of these multi million dollar endings. Yeah. Just here, take it. Boom. Yeah. Take the ending. <laughs> Don't even try. Do you and want to skip it? Pay me a dollar. And you here's 36 achievements yeah. along with that. Yeah, here's this. No, because uh, the world needs a challenge. Because uh, with Obama, <laughs> everybody just gets handed everything. <laughs> I guess he won. I'm going to go on welfare now. <laughs> and I don't believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> no digital handouts. No. <laughs> Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... Yeah, yeah. Game, games games need to be hard. I like that. They, I like that. They, they, you need to have. We can't be drones that just constantly consume. We have to. Yeah. We have to have something in our life that makes us feel good. And if we don't, then we all become very uncreative and and very uninspired for everything. Like uh, I was playing. Um, the only good thing about the Vita is that you can remote play Shadow of the Colossus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, I just, like yesterday, beat Shadow of the Colossus, and that's a good feeling, because you're like, not only like symbolically, you're like climbing this giant mountain of a thing and stabbing it in the head until it dies, and then you feel amazing and bad <laughs> yeah. at the same time. <laughs> but like, there's a sense of accomplishment there, because when the Colossi were tough, and like, there was, one, it took me forever. I've, I had beaten the game before, but it was like, you know, just going back through it, and I'm, I'm stabbing him in his stomach, and I finally fucking beat him, and it's just like, fuck you! <laughs> you died! <laughs> and, and then he dies, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, and then the sad music comes up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, there's that feeling of, like, total accomplishment, and, yeah. You need that, and it's uh, th that's why, and that's that's why it's hard is because uh, uh, you deserve the challenge, and we did it for you. We want you to feel <laughs> empowered. <laughs> Everything we do is for you. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh man. Well, I I still have not completed your game. I, <laughs> Where are you? Um. I, I've dabbled in the dark world, and that's all I'll say about that, because, <laughs> god damn it. Um, but I got, I, I'm in the rapture, and I'm still, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's, I have to, I like a hard game, I, I'll, straight up, um, but I have to put it down for a little bit, for a couple weeks, and then I'll come back to it. I mean, actually, I put it down for a, for a long while, uh, maybe like a year, and then picked it up again a couple weeks ago. And then I was I was kind of obsessive about it for three or four days. And yeah, this game is great, man. This game is great. 
So I'm really desensitized to how hard the game actually is. <laughs> because people tell me this, and I, I like even as you're saying, I'm like, oh, Rapture. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not difficult. Like, there's some levels that like there's one in the hospital. Um, it's like the second level in the hospital. I can do it with my eyes closed and faster than like anything because it's just like I've done it so many times wow. where it's like it's the one where you fall and there's like the needles and you have mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, like in the speed runs, you'll see it where people just go, mm, dun, dun. <laughs> like I. Yeah, so I'm really desensitized to this is a really hard game because to me it's just like, yeah, I guess it's kind of hard. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> when people are like, I can't get past the first boss, I'm like, are you fucking kidding Come me? On. <laughs> what, you just jump over saws. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> and yeah, I can't get past this level in the salt factory. And it's like, are you, are you dumb salt work? Are you... <laughs> Are you slow? <laughs> and then I, then of course I'm taken back, and I'm like, oh, I've beaten this game like four hundred thousand fucking yeah. times, so it is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how many? I mean, yeah, just uh, yeah, out of curiosity. Like, how many times did you? I mean, did did you have a? Uh, was there a, was there a way it was too hard? Was there was there a way that a level? I mean, did you have to beat a level? three or four times in a row without dying before you could say, okay, this level is appropriately... It was one time. Because as long as you could get through the level, <laughs> it is, it, it, as long as you could beat the level, it is an applicable level. There you are. <laughs> um, yeah, there was only one time. There, there was lots of testing with the levels because uh, what Ed would do is he would make the level and he would give it to me. And uh, I would play through it, and if a jump felt weird, because mm -hmm. that's something I'm in tune to, is like, you know, when you jump from here, if this platform was like here, the jump wouldn't feel so awkward, you know, because you're like down, and then you're, you know, you mm -hmm. kind of, like these weird, like descriptive things, because, you know, it just, just kind of how the way it was. And so that's kind of the process where Ed would send me a level, I would play through it, and if I couldn't beat it because of one of those things, and if I couldn't beat it over and over, even though the level is possible, I'm like, okay, the level's possible, but the level is frustrating. The level is frustrating because of this jump, because you're not, like, one of them was your natural, like, inclination was to jump and slide up the wall and then, you know, bounce over here. Or it was, it was like you had to bounce down over here. Well when you jump and you slide, you would always miss it. And it was like, this is timed like too perfectly in order to do this. And it's very, very frustrating to actually do. And uh, there are still jumps like that in the game, but they're the jumps that have been approved. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've never statistic. all the way gone through the game and 100% of it. I've beaten every level. Right. Um, Ed's the only one on the team that has 100% of the game. Like, wow. and he had to do it during our testing, like for Microsoft, he had to do it every day for like eight days. And like, it takes a while. Good God. So yeah, like, so, and, and as a result, like uh, the kid levels were toned down because of that, because as he was going through them, and he, because he had to get everything, he had to 100% it to make sure achievements and unlocks and all this stuff. And since I couldn't, that was on him. And he's just like, you know what? Fuck this level. I am so tired of going through this level every time. It takes me 30 minutes to beat it. I'm going to move these spikes around. <laughs> and then he did. So be lucky. Be, be thankful. <laughs> and and, and be, be grateful that Ed played through those levels. Because they could have been much harder. <laughs> if, if it just... Yeah, I, I remember the first kid level. I, I didn't... I never beat it. <laughs> the, the first one. Because I was like... I, I remember there was like some conversation where I'm like, did you actually beat this? He goes, yeah, well, I'll take your word for it because I'm fucking done. I have tried for 45 fucking minutes and I'm not doing this anymore. Wow. I have too much shit to do. That's fantastic. Um, isn't it? I, I imagine though that ever since you guys have posted the game, like people are just, it, you've been amazed by how many people have done incredible Iron Man speed runs. Oh, God, yes. so some of those people, like uh, the world record speed run, I think it's like 17 sec seconds, minutes. <laughs> 17 minutes is, like they do stuff that I didn't know was possible. Wow. Like jumping through lasers based on the fact that like for a split second when it moves, like it can reinterpolate like the frame, wow. go through it. 
And I always knew that would happen. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was just, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> the best video, though, was uh, this guy, and I had talked about it during development where I wanted to see this guy do this Meat Ninja one, which is the guy that can, like, teleport through saws and stuff mm. if you hit, like, the attack button or the, the special button right at the correct frame. And this guy was running through these levels doing that. And, like, it made me cry at how fucking awesome it was. Because wow. it was stuff I couldn't do. Wow. And he's, like, there's, like, lava dripping down through here. And it's, like, <laughs> and he beats this level that's huge in, like, a matter of three seconds. And I'm just, uh, like, the that was one of those, like, awesome defining moments. Because it happened, I think it happened, like, six months after the game came out. And it was just, like, it was, like, this is unbelievable. This guy, and yeah, we got his address. We sent him stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> because good. it's just like, you have done what we set out <laughs> for someone to do. Is play the game much better than we could have ever imagined. <laughs> that was really good. Well, um, I hope I, I, I uh, I'm so happy to sit down and, and, and talk to you. And I, I hope that um, people continue to love your games as much in the future as uh, they do, as they have. And um, me too. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thanks for your work, man. And um, this has been a, this has been a great talk. Uh, thank you. It means a lot uh, to me that you would uh, take time out of your schedule. And, and You're very welcome. Love. Cool, dude. Well, um, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess I guess we'll end it up there. Uh, uh, this has been State of Play. Thanks for watching. Uh, my guest has been Tommy Refinis. Um, thank you again, Tommy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. Uh, on, uh, we'll see you at Eugenics down, yes. down the line. Down the line. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.